Kev? Yes, Matt. Can I ask you a question? I hate it when people say that. What would you do if I said no? Um... What's your question? Well, I don't want to sound impolite. Mm Mm-hmm, but... But what are your Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred doing here? Yeah, sorry about that. I got a letter from them last week saying they were going to be in town for a few days and would possibly come over and say hi. I hope it's okay. Of course, Kev, totally. It's just that... What are they doing sitting here in the lounge with us right now at this very moment whilst we set up for the show? I know. I can only apologise. Like I said, I got that letter last week and then when they rocked up at my doorstep on Thursday with a suitcase in each hand, I realised they must be staying a few nights. Will it be alright? Oh, absolutely. It's no problem. It's just that... It's just what? Tonight we're recording at my house. That is a bit strange, I grant you. And I've got no explanation for it. They haven't said or done a single thing since arriving at mine. They just sat on the sofa, hands folded in their laps, staring silently at me. You mean like they're doing right now? Exactly. Only tonight, when I said I'm off to Matt's to record the podcast, they sprang into life, jumped up from the sofa and went outside and in my car before I'd even unlocked it. Spooky. Yeah. Have they really not said or done anything since Thursday night? Not even a cough or a hiccup. But it's Monday? I know. They've not slept. They've not eaten. I don't think either of them have even been to the toilet. Kev, you can't scrutinise your guest toileting habits. Remember what that police officer told you? No, Matt. She and I weren't talking about BM. We were talking about the PM, as in the Prime Minister. Big difference. Oh, sorry, Kev. I sometimes get BMs and PMs mixed up. I think there's an entire country of people who would agree with you. Meanwhile, what are we going to do about Arnie Mabel and Uncle Fred? Hmm, tricky. I can't believe they haven't slept since arriving at your house. Not even a nap. In fact, when I finally got bored of trying to make conversation on Thursday night, I just went to bed, switched off all the lights in the lounge and left them on the sofa. What happened? Well, when I went back downstairs in the morning, they were still sitting there, hands folded in the laps, just staring at me. Exactly like they're doing right now, Kev. Exactly like they're doing right now. I might have found it creepy if they weren't family. Seems a little bit creepy, even though they are. Good point. The only time they've moved is when I said, I'm coming here to record. Well, if they're interested in the show, they might want to do the title read. Oh, that's a good idea, Matt. I'll cue the intro music, you show them the computer screen. Righto. Here you go, guys. Do you want to read what it says on the screen? Arnie Mabel? Uncle Fred? Do you want to just read the lines? Just here, look? Where it says Cat Noir presents Matt Kev's bogus non-journey? By Matt Sanders and Kevin Chilvers? Absolutely nothing, Matt. They're not even blinking. That was a complete bust. Disastrous, Kev. Why do you think they were so keen to come over if they don't want to be part of the show? Hmm, tough to tell. They're not really giving anything away with their body language. I suppose I could introduce myself. I haven't done that yet. Maybe they're just a bit nervous. You haven't introduced yourself yet? Nope. When I opened the door, they just charged straight in and sat on the sofa, folding their hands in their laps. Then I helped you bring the recording equipment in whilst you told me who they are. I see. I guess you could try making introductions, see if you get any further than I did. Leave it to me, Kev. I'll switch on the old charm. Oh dear. Good evening, Kev's Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred. I'm Matt. Me and Kev do a little show called Krav Maga. Cat Noir. Cat Noir. Welcome to my home. Please make yourselves comfortable. Oh, and the toilet's just down there in the hall because it sounds like you both really, really might need it. You're trying to be charming, remember? Oh yeah. Can I offer either of you anything? Tea, coffee, a prawn cocktail? Nothing, Kev. Not even a nod. Still, though, I'll take a prawn cocktail if there's one going. Yeah, help yourself. Lettuce is in the fridge, prawns are in the freezer. They should take about four hours to defrost. Actually, I might leave it for now. I don't blame you. It's a lot of work. Besides, we still need to sort out what's going on with your aunt and uncle. Oh, yeah, I forgot about them. Do you think there's something wrong, but they're not able to tell us what? Mm, Could be. I hadn't really thought of that. Maybe they're ill. Hang on, I'll ask them. Are you both all right? Blink now if you need urgent medical attention. Raise one eyebrow if the need is not medical in origin, but you do still require some help. Or lift one foot slightly off the floor if it's not help you need, but you've actually been possessed by an old world demon. Tap your elbows if this is all just some big practical joke. Click your fingers if you've been sworn to silence or death from some nefarious foe of ours. Cross your eyes if you've both been replaced by aliens. Stand up and twerk if you've been struck by an ancient curse. Or, if it's none of the above, do the Macarena. Absolutely nothing, Kev. Yeah, complete silence. They're just sitting on the sofa staring at us with their hands folded in their laps. Well, they're conscious and seated and breathing, so we know they're alive. That's true. Plus, they don't appear to be expressing any pain, discomfort or distress. Good point. 
That means they probably don't need any medical help. Mm, but they still aren't blinking and that really bothers me. Yeah. Just look how dried up your Uncle Fred's eyeballs are. Matt, would you mind not poking my Uncle Fred's eyeball with your finger? He doesn't seem bothered, Kev. That's beside the point. It's just not acceptable social etiquette. Fair enough. Sorry, Kev. Sorry, Kev's Uncle Fred. I think we might need to get some professionals in. Who are you thinking of calling? Well, I was wondering about social services. Oh, brilliant idea, Kev. Wait a minute. Who are they? I think they're the people you call when you want to get rid of unwanted relatives in your house. That sounds perfect. No offence, Kev's Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred. It's just that we want to get on with the show and it's hard to concentrate with you two staring at us. And you've only had it this evening, Matt. They've been staring at me for five days. I'm finally starting to get irritated by it, so we need social services. Righto. You search on the laptop, I'll use my phone. Good idea, Matt. They say two heads are better than one, although in our case it's more like one and a half. Hey, I found something. And there's an app. Great. Just downloading it now. And we're in. Fantastic. Now, what do they want to know? Uh, let's see. Question one. What is the nature of your problem? Mm. Put, unwanted relatives have outstayed their welcome. Uh huh. Not responding to us, yet feel awkward about asking them to leave. Hang on. Yep. Please come and remove them. Uh, got it. Okay, question two. What is your address? Well, that's an easy one. I can put that in by myself. Wait a minute. Let me just see what you've written. Here you go. Yeah. You've typed in your neighbour's house. Have I, Kev? You have. My mistake. Easily rectifiable. There. And send. Was that it, then? Don't they want to know anything else? Nope. Just those two questions. Oh, and look. They've responded already. What does it say? Um, It says... No problem, we have dispatched a unit urgently to your address. Brilliant, that was really quick. So, what do we do now? Guess we just sit back and wait. <laughs> Don't worry, Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred. We're getting someone here to help you. Or at least move you on a bit so we can get on with the show without you both staring at us. Yeah. Hey, what's that? I think they're here. I'm sitting. I'm sitting. You did. did. What the ruddy hell's going on now, Kev? I have the foggiest, but they don't sound like social services. Give me your phone. Let me have a look at it again. Here you go. Right, let's have a look. Ah, uh, I see what's happened. Talk me through it, Kev. This is an app for anti-social services. They are not who we want to talk to. Ah, that's quite a blunder. What on earth are we going to do? Don't worry. I'll just message him again. Just update. Everything is fine now. Please stand down your unit. Send. Let's hope they're just as quick as they were to send people here. I know what you mean. We're never going to get the show started at this rate. Ah, speak of the devil. It says, no problem. Thank you for using our service today. It's got a thumbs up emoji. How nice. This idiot is wasting to pay money. Back in the bad land. I think they've gone, Kev. Well, that's something at least. But now we're stuck with Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred sitting staring at us. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should just ask them to leave instead of getting someone else to do it for us. Feels like the responsible thing to do. I'm just not sure they're going to answer us. I know what you mean. But you can at least try. Fair enough. Listen here, Kev's Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred. Thanks for coming over. But we really need to be getting on with our show now. So, um, Kev? Would you mind clearing off now? If that would be okay. I mean... You can even wait back at mine if you want to. They aren't saying anything, Kev. No, just staring at us silently with their hands folded in the laps. This is intolerable. Shall I call Danny Peaks? No, 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 Matt. We don't want things to get ugly. They are family after all, apparently. What do you mean, apparently? I've been thinking it over and I don't actually recall having an Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred. Can you move away from the sound effects button? Sorry, I was startled and distracted. Me too, but I've been picturing a photo in my mind that was taken last summer of my whole family. I just can't see Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred. Hmm, has anyone in your bloodline ever mentioned them to you before? No, not that I can think of. I see. Have you ever, and this question is crucial, Kev... 
Have you ever actually met these two people before? No. I don't think I have, Matt. Right. One more question then. Who are these two complete strangers sitting silently on my sofa and staring at us with their hands folded in their laps? I only asked because I was jabbing at one of their eyeballs earlier on with my finger. I've got absolutely no idea, Matt. Well, that's a worry. Should we flick the news on to see if anyone's been reported missing? Hmm, Good idea. I'll turn the radio on. This is the news. I'm Biscuit Crunch. An older male and female couple are both lurking and skulking in the local community in a manner reminiscent of that movie, The Visit. The couple, who could easily be mistaken as an elderly aunt and uncle, are thought to be silent and ever so slightly annoying. However, it remains unclear what their intentions actually are and indeed if they're dangerous or not. We're going live now to our reporter on the scene, Insert Nam here, for the latest update. Insert. Thanks, Biscuit. I'm still in the studio because we don't know where the mysterious couple actually are right now. We know they're in the area, but London's a big city, so they could literally be anywhere. They could even be in your house. In which case, take great care and don't poke their eyeballs with your finger. Biscuit, it's back to you. Thanks, Insert. And since we've run out of news because there are no other stories to tell this week, stay with us for blues legend Simon Ninone whose award-winning hit is still at number one in the charts after a full 35 weeks. That's right, it's My Baby Just Cares for Soup. My baby don't watch no Netflix. Baby got no time for Prime. My baby don't like digital media. My baby just cares for soup. My baby don't like to go shopping. Baby don't like coffee and cake My baby got no time for nonsense My baby just cares for soup Well, that told us nothing, Kev. On the contrary, Matt. It told us two people are running around the community looking a bit suspicious in an elderly aunt and uncle sort of way. Well, I hope they don't come here. We've got enough going on with these two on the sofa. No, Matt. I think these two are the mysterious couple from the radio. What? Oh, Kev, we're never going to get the episode started at this rate. I know. I've been thinking about that too. How long have we got left? Um, I reckon we're halfway through already. I think we'd have more control over the timing of a pre-recorded podcast. I know exactly what you mean. No, you don't, Matt. But what about if we just started the episode anyway? What? You mean right now? With your Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred staring at us with their hands folded in their laps? They're not my Auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred. They're two mysterious strangers whose motives are currently unknown. Oh, yeah. I propose we ignore them and get on with the podcast. So just do what we can with the time we've got left and hope these two don't kill us along the way? Yeah. Well, I'm game if you are, Kev. I am. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, we're running a little bit late tonight. Yep. Welcome to Pinot Noir. Cat Noir. Cat Noir. We had a cracking show lined up for you tonight, listeners, but unfortunately, we're a bit behind due to unexpected circumstances. So... Hang on, Matt. The mysterious couple are up to something. Oh, yeah. They're standing up and waving their arms around like flaming cartoon robots. Typical. Just when we get started. Are you beginning your podcast now, dear? Oh, he's always loved a podcast, that one, ever since he were two. Kev, they're talking. Yes, I can hear them. Are you two all right? Is there something to help you with? Are you beginning your podcast now, dear? Oh, he's always loved a podcast, that one, ever since he were two. I don't think they're listening to him. They're just standing there waving their arms around like bad sci-fi. Why are their voices weird? I'm not sure, but this is the most animated I've seen them, apart from when they got into my car earlier this evening. Are you beginning your podcast now, dear? Oh, he's always loved a podcast, that one, ever since he were two. I didn't know you'd been listening to podcasts since you were two. I don't think podcasts were around when I was two, Matt. Oh, yeah. Are you beginning your podcast now, dear? Oh, he's always loved a podcast, that one, ever since he oh, were two. Oh, for crying out loud. Yes, we've started the podcast now. Why? Podcast, podcast activated. activated. What the bloody hell are they up to now, Kev? Well, Matt, unless my eyes are very much deceive me, Auntie Mabel was pulling at a toggle at the top of her head and seems to be unzipping her face. Looks like your Uncle Fred's unzipping himself now, too. I wish you'd phrase that differently. Podcast activated. We know! Ta-da! I'm free, Kev. Hang on! Here we go. I'm free now too. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. Yep. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Cat Noir. We've got a cracking show coming up for you tonight, full of wacky hijinks and shenanigans. But before any of that, we'd like just a moment to give thanks to our overlord and saviour of all podcasts, Augustus Pennington Smythe. Quite right, Matt. What a hero that man is. He really is nothing short of spectacular. 
What's that name again, Kev? Augustus Pennington Smythe. Well, that's one name I won't be forgetting in a hurry. Me neither, Matt. You see, Augustus Pennington Smythe is every bit the legend we've all heard about. What the ruddy hell's going on now, Kev? Well, Matt, unless I'm very much mistaken, the two mysterious strangers who've sat on my sofa for the last five days and then sat on yours, hand-folded in their laps and pretending to be my auntie Mabel and Uncle Fred, have just unzipped what appears to be some sort of skin suit disguise and are, in fact, underneath identical versions of you and me. Would that seem like a reasonable assessment of the situation to everyone here? Sounds bang on the money to me, Kev. Yes, I couldn't have put it better myself, Kev. I still don't understand what's happening, Kev. It's quite easy, Matt. We're duplicate robot versions of you two sent here to kill you and take over the podcast. We were programmed to stay in disguise until you began tonight's episode. Then we could reveal ourselves and commence the takeover. Ah, that makes far more sense. Thanks, Kev. You really keep me grounded. That wasn't me, Matt. That was fake, Kev. Hmm. I can see this getting a bit confusing. Me too. And me. In fact, that was a surprisingly sensible observation of you to make, Matt. It wasn't me, Kev. It was me! See? I'm struggling to keep up with what's going on. All right then, Matt. How about you and I call each other Real Kev and Real Matt, and we'll call the other two Fake Kev and Fake Matt. It might make it easier for the listeners. That's a great idea. No, it's not. Yeah. For all you know, I might be a more Real Kev than you'll ever be. Hmm. I see. Let's try this again. Matt. Yes, Yes, Kev. Kev. I mean the real Matt. Oh. Uh Ha-ha. Can you play any instruments? Um, my sister can play the piano. And how would that help us now? Yeah, Yeah, Matt. Matt. Well, I suppose it wouldn't. But I can play the triangle. Everyone can play the triangle. Yeah, what an idiot. Ignore them. Take this triangle. Thank you. And I'll use this tambourine. Where's my instrument? I want a bassoon. Yeah, and I want Warren's tuba. Be quiet, you two. I'm trying to uncomplicate things. Yeah, shush, Kev. Yeah, shush, Matt. What's the plan, Kev? Well, Matt, whenever you say anything, if you ting the triangle afterwards, we'll all know it's you and not fake, Matt. That's a terrible idea, Kev. That's a brilliant idea, Kev. You see, it's working already. I'll shake this tambourine whenever I speak and then we'll know it's me. Perfect. We might be able to salvage this episode after all. Oh, this is ridiculous. I say we just kill them now and get on with the show. I agree, Kev. It's what Augustus Pennington Smythe would want. It's what he programmed us to do. Kev, are we going to die now? Triangle. Oh yeah, sorry, Kev. Are we going to die now? Yes, Matt, quite possibly. But they haven't really explained why. What? Yeah, we told you already. We've been sent here to kill you and take over the podcast. Who sent you? Augustus Augustus Pennington Pennington Smythe. Never Never heard heard of him. him. Well, he's heard of you. He's actually tried to take over this show a bunch of times already, but he's just not been successful yet. Yep, we're his latest plan. So, how do you want to go? Squished head or laser burns from the inside? Um, Kev? Hang on. There's a massive plot hole here. If Augustus Pennington Smythe programmed you to activate when the podcast started tonight... Why not just come straight here? Why have you been hanging around at mine for the past five days pretending to be my Aunt Mabel and Uncle Fred? Good question, Kev. Oh, that's easy. Augustus Pennington Smythe knows where you live, Kev. So he sent us there in disguise to wait for the podcast to start. But he didn't programme us to know where Matt lives because you usually record at Kev's. That's true, Kev. We do usually record at yours. I know I'm usually there. So... When Kev said earlier tonight he was going to Matt's to record the podcast... We knew it was go time. I see. So who sent me the letter? Augustus Pennington Smythe. He truly is a great man. There you go, Kev. Everything makes sense now. No, it doesn't. But I think we've got an advantage here, Matt. How do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. How How do do you you mean? mean? They didn't know where you lived, Matt. So even though they look identical to us, they don't know everything about us that we know. And that gives us an advantage. I see what you mean. I don't. Yeah, me neither. Just because you know some things we don't, we might have skills and knowledge that you don't. Like what? Um. Well, for starters, real Matt can't whistle. He's right, Kev. It's a disappointment I have to face daily. I know. I have to dub your whistles in for you in post. And I'm always grateful, Kev. Well, not me. I can whistle all by myself. Look, I'm being taunted by my own shame, Kev. Despicable. I think it's high time you two left. Oh, they're just not listening, Kev. Should we initiate the Exalted One's plans? What, you mean, should we squish their heads in now and hijack the show? Yep. I think that's a great idea, Matt. Then we can get on with talking about how wonderful Augustus Pennington Smythe is. He's absolutely first-rate, Kev. An all-round supreme leader and good egg. Come on, then. Let's get squishing. Kev, I've just this second realised that this whole plot is a bit like Bill and Ted's bogus journey. 
How do you mean, dude? A bogus tyrannical overlord sends out two identical robots to kill the main cast and take over. Hmm, I suppose this is a bit like that. But I've not seen the film, what happens? From what I remember, it all goes a bit multiverse with Bill and Ted travelling various different dimensions. What? We haven't got the money for that. What with the cost of Restoration Falls and the missing sequel, we're already well over budget this year. We haven't even paid Honk Romsey yet. He won't be happy about that, Kev. Exactly. So I'm afraid we just do not have the budget for this episode to go multiverse. Well, what do we do then? Fake Kev and fake Matt are holding up their fists now. We're just waiting for you to finish whatever nonsense you're chatting about. Then we're going to squish your heads and talk about our glorious leader, Augustus Pennington Smythe. Such a great man. Such a great man. Kev, I don't want to die to a robot who looks and sounds exactly like me but can whistle. Don't worry, Matt. I've got a plan. Oi, you two. How about a final request? Ah, oh, how romantic. I love a final request, Kev. Nothing could possibly go wrong with that. What do you say? Hmm, what's your request? Well, Matt and I always have a prawn cocktail around about now. Don't we, Matt? Uh, do we, Kev? So, we're wondering if you'd like to join us for one since it'll be our last time. Oh, that sounds lovely. Let's have a prawn cocktail and then we'll squish their heads. All right then, since it's tradition. But it's not a tradition, Kev. Shut up, Matt. Go and serve us a nice fresh prawn cocktail, just like you do around the same time every week. Why are you winking at me, Kev? I'm not. Yes, you are. And anyway, the prawns are still in the freezer. They're going to need to defrost for a good few hours. No, 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 no. Shh. The prawns will be perfect for serving right now at this exact second, Matt. So please go and make four nice fresh prawn cocktails. Fair enough. Will do. But I need to put my triangle down, though. Oh, uh, I mean, though. Making a prawn cocktail. So, how long have you two been in existence then? You don't need to make chit chat with us before we kill you, Kev. Matt's right, Kev. We could just sit here in silence. I try to not let that happen on a podcast, it's pretty bad for business. Here we are then, chaps. Four fresh prawn cocktails. Though I really have to say, Kev, these prawns look absolutely delicious, Matt. Well done. Here you go, fake Kev and fake Matt. Tuck in. Thanks, Thanks Kev. Kev. Uh, wait a minute. What, Kev? Yeah. What, Kev? Yeah. What, Kev? It's just I wanted our guests to have the first taste. Only real Matt put the triangle down, and now I don't know which of you is real Matt. Hmm. Tricky, Kev. Yeah. Tricky, Kev. I don't care. I just want the prawns. Wait. I've got it. Matt. Could you just give me a quick whistle? Of course I can't, Kev. You know that. Why do you have to keep bringing up my deepest shame? I'll do it. I can whistle for hours. <laughs> Here you go. Have a prawn cocktail. And you can tuck into yours now, Kev. Ah, oh, thanks, Kev. Mmm. This is delicious. Oh, yeah, this is really tasty. Hang on, there's something wrong. My internal core processor is cooling at an alarming rate. Uh, 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 mine too. Something's wrong. It's it's like my my insides are, are frozen, frozen, frozen. Warning, warning, warning. Low temperature critical. My insides are frozen, frozen. Let it go, frozen. Let it go, frozen. Can't hold it back, frozen anymore. Shutting down. I tried to tell you those prawns are still frozen, Kev. I know, I remembered from earlier. Well, how do you know they'd make the robot asses malfunction and self-destruct? Simple. Everyone knows. Robots can't process frozen prawns. Really? Where'd you learn that? Carl Terminator. He's incredibly informative. Honestly, Matt, do you even listen to our podcast? I tend to forget it's on, Kev. This episode's been a bust and we're almost out of time. Oh, yeah. What are we going to do? I suggest we wrap it now and go down the pub. Good idea. You've been listening to Matt and Kev's Bogus Non-Journey. Oh, I finally understand the title now, Kev. Yeah, me too. This episode was written, produced, recorded and edited by Matt Sanders and Kevin Chouris. Emotional material by Laurie Stone. If you enjoyed what you heard, then remember to give us a like, subscribe and review wherever you heard us. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at Cat Noir Podcast. Join us again next time, where hopefully no one will be trying to kill us. You don't need the triangle now, Matt. Oh, yeah.